morning and Merry Christmas. Oh, you guys can do better than that. There we go. It's the Christmas joy season, so we've got to be joyful when we're worshiping as well. Speaking of the Christmas joy offering, you'll see the envelope is in your um, bulletin today. Uh, this is being received this morning. It is shared equally between the assistance programs through the denomination, which provides assistance to church workers and Presbyterian-related racial, ethnic colleges and schools. Um, if you don't have, you forgot your check, like I forgot my check, you can bring it tonight or even next Sunday uh, to bring that in. The choir will rehearse today immediately following the worship service. Uh, we want to hear a great choir tonight, so please be here. Just come on up on the chancel right after the postlude, and we'll be ready to sing. It will not take long. Uh, speaking of offerings, if you uh, ask for offering envelopes, they are out in Galbraith Hall for 2018. Please pick them up. If you don't find yours there, please leave a note on the attendance register or, you know, see me or someone uh, from the, and one of the elders, and we can get that message to the office, and we'll be sure to have them for you for next week, uh, or definitely the following week. Tonight, our service is a communion and candlelight service. It will begin at 6.30. We hope that you are here with your friends and family as we celebrate the birth of our Savior. Just as a reminder, the church office is closed uh, this entire week from January 25th, or yeah, December 25th through January 1st. However, the office does remind the committee chairs that your annual reports are due by January 3rd. Um, if you have an emergency need, need this is for everyone, uh, please leave a message on the church answering machine. Uh, that will be checked during the week that if there is an emergency, we will let uh, the appropriate people know and be able to help you as much as we can. Uh, during this time when it's getting colder, just as a reminder, we do have a great program with Father Denny. If someone is in need, you'll notice the number is in the bulletin. Uh, if someone needs assistance in any regards, Father Denny is the route that we would like to go with. Uh, when you came in today, you were handed a calendar. This is something new that we are doing this year. Uh, this is by a lot of effort by Carolyn Moody, which was a great idea, uh, that she took our volunteer sheets and what our mission uh, committee does. And we will have this for the entire year. Uh, you will get it two months at a time, okay? And we are asking that you put this in a place where you do your prayer every day. And there's one thing that we would ask for you to add to your prayer list for that day. This is a great opportunity as we reinvent what we are and recreate what we are as a church. Prayer is the way that we're going to do that. And so a, an emphasis on prayer is really, really appropriate. So thank you, Carolyn, for all the work that you did in putting that together because that was a lot of work. Um, as a, rem a reminder, um, uh, Ryan said something to me this morning, just wanted to put that out. The tax laws are changing for 2018, particularly if you itemize your taxes. Uh, you may want to check with a tax preparer um, on what you might want to do uh, with your giving for next year uh, due to those changes. Uh, if you have any questions, and now more information, please see Ryan. He can give you the topic a little better than I can, but then uh, talk to a tax preparer. Also, we got information this morning um, that Matthew Marburger, uh, which would be Ron's grandson and uh, who grew up in our church, uh, was life flighted uh, to Pittsburgh after a car accident uh, last night. So please add Matthew to your prayers. I believe that's it. Let us prepare to worship God.
Today we light our four candles of the, on the Advent wreath. The prophecy candle, the Bethlehem candle, the shepherd's candle, and the angel's candle. The first candle reminds us to prepare for the coming of the land. The second candle reminds us to celebrate in the light of the manger. The third can candle reminds us to share the Lord light as did the shepherds. Today the fourth candle reminds us to worship the light as did the angels with their songs. As it says in Luke 2, verses 13 through 14, And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. So like the angels, we are to proclaim the good news of, the, of Christmas. Let us pray. Dear God, as the angels <clears throat> we are to, as the angels of the Savior's birth, let us sing the good news this day and throughout the whole year so we can go where angels fear to tread. Go with us as we take your light into the dark world. May we brighten the corner where we are with the light of Jesus. Amen. Remember that our Lord Jesus can sympathize with us in our weaknesses, since in every respect he was tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with boldness approach the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So in humility and faith, let us confess our sins before God and one another with the unison prayer of confession. Let us pray. Our lives aren't anything to brag about. We're sure it's people like us that caused you to send your son into our world. Forgive us for glossing over the real significance of the birth of your son. Transform our lives into suitable mangers so that we may be humble and willing to make a place in our hearts for Christ to be born. We pray as your children, Eternal Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, as we humbly lift up all our personal sins, seeking forgiveness. Amen. 
Hear the good news. This saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. Let us remember that in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven, and all the people of God say, Amen. Amen. As God has forgiven us, let us show one another forgiveness by offering a sign of Christ's peace. Well, it's finally here. Christmas is coming. This is Christmas Eve day, and tomorrow is Christmas. And all of you look very Christmassy. Very good. Very all set to go for, for Santa and all the, all the good things that are happening for Christmas. We have our four candles lit, and tonight we light the middle candle, which is the Christ candle. And tonight we also light, we, you all get candles, and we'll light candles and have communion. It'll be Christmas Eve, and then tomorrow is Christmas Day, the best, one of the best days of the year. Now, when, when Christmas ki- com- comes, I, I, you, you all get Christmas cards at home. Yeah, get, yeah we, Christmas cards are kind of nice. In fact, in this day and age, Card, Chris, card, any kind of a card is almost like a gift anymore because they're expensive. A lot of them are very, they're not just sending any notes, but Christmas cards are really nice. And I got this one Christmas card that was really nice. It says, wishing you peace at Christmas as we celebrate his birth. And there's a picture of Mary and Joseph and they're going into Bethlehem. But this was a very special card. I thought, well, that's just nice. It's a really nice card. But then when I opened it, something special happened. Guess what happened when I opened it? Not quite, but listen what happens when I open it. That's silent night, holy night. And there's words, and there's, there's words, but I didn't even have to read the words because I heard the music of silent night when I opened the card. And that was a surprise. I was expecting just to have to read something, but instead my ears heard something that made it very special and I didn't even and since I knew the tune I knew what it was saying I didn't even have to read it we're a lot like cards you and I we look good on the outside and we and people see us and say oh isn't that nice they look very pretty and they're nice all dressed up and you're very but then what happens when we open our mouths and they hear us What are we saying? Are they listening to what we're saying? And if they listen to what we say, that's more important than how we look. We look nice, but we can say something even better. And this Christmas card told me about Jesus in word and in song. You're the same way. 
people are listening to what you're going to say. They're watching what you do, and they're listening to what you say. This is the best way you can celebrate Christmas. Tell them about Jesus. So that when they look at you and they hear you, they'll know, why, there's a Christian. They're Christians because I see what they do and I hear what they say. That's what Christmas is all about. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for coming into our hearts that we can sing the music of Christmas and we can share that music and that wonderful noise and wonderful tunes with everyone we come in touch with. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. See you next time. Please pray with me. Guide us, O oh God, by your word and spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover your peace. Open our hearts to your good news. Help us make ready to welcome the Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. This beautiful prophecy of the Messiah and of the Messianic age refers to the anointed one even though the actual term Messiah is used. Let's listen for the word of God and read responsively from Isaiah 35, verses 1 through 10, which is found on page 757 of the Pew Bible, as well as projected on the wall. The congregation will read the even-numbered verses. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly, and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands, and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who have an anxious heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. In the haunt of jackals, where they lie down, the grass shall become reeds and rushes. And the highway shall be there, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. It shall belong to those who walk on the way. Even if they are fools, they shall not go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up on it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow, and Zion shall flee away. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now turn to the New Testament, to John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. And this is a very famous passage in the Bible. You've heard it before. And this first chapter of John is one of the greatest adventures of religious thought ever achieved by the mind of a human being. Now, the Greek term for word is logos. But logos also means reason. So whenever they used the word logos, the term used logos for word, the twin ideas of the word of God and the reason of God were in their minds. And we need to think the same way as we listen for the logos, the word of God, John 1, 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, the Logos. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the Word of the Lord. Speak to God. Let us pray. Oh God, may you bless now not only the readings from your word and the singing of your word and the playing of your word so that it all might become your word to us on this Christmas Eve Sunday, the fourth Sunday in Advent, 2017. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. You probably noticed that some words in our language are very strange words. You will run across them now and again, words we hardly ever use. But those who do crossword puzzles, those of you that do those, you run across these strange words once in a while. Uh, words that are, they're real words, but we hardly ever use them. I found a couple of some words that I thought were kind of fun. One word I found was honey fuggle. Honey fuggle means to deceive by flattery or sweet talk. That's usually what husbands try to do to get out of trouble using lots of honey fuggle. Another word I liked is snolly goster. Snolly goster refers to a shrewd, unprincipled person, usually referring to a politician. There seems to be a lot of snolly gosters in Washington these days. Another word I came across was ishkabibble. Ishkabibble. This is just a dismissive statement. Whatever dismissive statement is, that ishkabibble. So let's see. How could I use all those words? That snolly goster's honey fuggle was a lot of ishkabibble. There you go. We don't use words. They're kind of fun, those kinds of words. Some words are humorous. Some are powerful. Some are very moving. A lot to do with words in our language. There are many stories about Albert Einstein, as you know. 
As, as you remember, he was listed by the Nazis as public enemy number one back in 1934. So he came to America and he settled in Princeton, New Jersey. Now among the many stories that grew up around his name, one dealt with a time when he was scheduled to speak as, as the guest speaker at a banquet for distinguished Americans. And when he was called upon to speak, he came slowly to the podium with generous applause. Everyone knew who he was. And then he said quietly, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry, but I've nothing to say. He paused while surprise held the audience in a grip of silence. And then he added, but then I do, I'll come back. Six months later, he came back. And he delivered a speech that changed the history of the world and the atomic age began. God did the same thing. With the oracle given to the prophet Malachi, God closed the Old Testament scriptures. In effect, God said, I have nothing more to say, but when I do, I'll come back. And that's precisely what God did. After a silence of some 450 years, God spoke. In Hebrews chapter 1, Hebrews put it this way, Long ago God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets, but in these last days He has spoken to us by a Son, whom He appointed heir of all things. Therefore, folks, anything less than the entire story of the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ is too short a sermon for Christmas. So, if you'll settle back, we should be finished about this time tomorrow, I figure. Yeah, sermons, they said, as you've probably heard, the best kind of a sermon has a good beginning, it has a good ending, and not too much space in between. God's sermon is just right. It reminds me of the pastor visiting a new member of his flock and he wasn't sure how to begin the conversation with this lady so he said well uh, <clears throat> madam uh, you have quite a long uh, path uh, leading to your house she said oh yes yes pastor it is quite long but you know if if it had been any shorter it wouldn't have reached anything less than the entire story of the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus is too short a sermon for Christmas. Because to remember exclusively only the nativity scene with wise men and shepherds and angels and the baby in the manger tends to result in a proclamation of a faith with lots of milk but no meat. It's like the birthday candles without the cake. When the angel choir joined the herald angel in that great chorus celebrating the birth of Jesus, glory to God in the highest. We're reminded that everything Jesus was, everything that Jesus did, was a message of peace and goodwill toward us, as well as the assurance of a loving and caring God. The whole life of this child who was born in a manger was from the beginning to the end a message that tells us about the eternal Creator who is pleased to come and dwell with our race of fragile, fallible human beings, creatures to whom He gave life on this beautiful but inconsequential speck in the corner of an inconspicuous galaxy far from the center of God's immense universe. I have nothing to say, but when I do, I'll come back. He did. 
in Jesus Christ. The question is, do we listen? Do we really listen? Some of you might remember that old E.F. Hutton commercial from the 70s and the 80s. It ran for years. Uh, by the way, E.F. Hutton is now Smith Barney. Anyway, the E.F. Hutton commercials uh, came on and they had this fellow talking. When E.F. Hutton talks, everybody listens. Do we listen when God talks? Do you? Jesus preached a lot of sermons in that minor province of the Roman Empire. They were both short and long. For example, the Sermon on the Mount could be read in about 12 minutes and 30 seconds. And his even shorter sermon to the lawyer, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and your neighbor as yourself. That was it. All the sermons that Jesus preached have never been shrugged off by those who have even half Listen to them. They've captured the imaginations and haunted the conscience of the world ever since. Whatever else Jesus was or wasn't, he was never dull and life was never dull around him. What's more important than any of his sermons or any of his parables is his life which began at Christmas. It's a sermon 33 years long. A life which began in obscurity and was really unexpected at the time, narrowly escaping execution under a cruel tyrant, a youth spent in a craftsman's humble home, his adult life, a ministry of labor as a carpenter, and then just the last few years, healing and teaching and during those last few years, he gathered together a band of people who altered the course of history. And then he was condemned to death by crucifixion. And then the miracle of Easter. He returns to his people and finally says in Matthew 28, we read, And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the Christmas sermon we most need to hear and ponder. A sermon that challenges us, reassures us, and promises us a continuing presence, His presence in our lives and in our world. In the beginning was the sermon, and the sermon was with God, and the sermon was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And that life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And the sermon became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory. The glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. At the beginning of everything stands the loving purpose of our Creator God. The original Christmas sermon. In Jesus Christ, the babe in Bethlehem, the man from Nazareth, the sermon was preached. Mary, many rejected it. But to all who listened and put it into practice, he gave power to become children of God. The 33-year-long sermon, which our yearly Christmas commemorates, the coming of a Savior by whom the sermon was made flesh, is not only the longest, but the most powerful sermon the world has ever heard. When Cecil B. DeMille, one of the top movie producers of all time, wrote his life story, he wrote of the crowning moment of his life as they filmed the classic King of Kings, 
way back in 1925. Some of you probably remember Cecil B. DeMille more for the, the, the Ten Commandments that he also produced, many other movies. But this was one of his first movies he did back in 1925. It was about Christ, the King of Kings. He said they were on location and were doing the scene of the crucifixion. He had recruited a, a motley crowd for the mob scene. They were the ones who were to cry out, crucify him, crucify him. So DeMille had gone down into the dregs of the city to find his cast for the scene. And he picked life's, what he saw, life's defeated people to act as the soldiers in the crowd, believing that the faces of those who crucified Jesus, and I quote what DeMille said, should show the defeat that life can leave upon someone who holds goodness in utter contempt. They were filming the scene of the crucifixion on the day before Christmas. And DeMille wrote this. Here we were on a bare ugly hill with three crosses telling of his death when it was the eve of his birth. On the spur of the moment, as producer, I, who seldom said anything during the filming of a movie, called for silence. And then I stepped in front of the crowd and announced, in honor of Christ the King, we'll take five minutes for meditation and prayer. Here and there across the faces of the crowd I saw cynical smiles. Immediately I thought I'd made a mistake. I said to myself, well, well, they'll just saunter off during the five minutes and get a drink or take a smoke or chit-chat. Nevertheless, I stood before them and bowed my head and closed my eyes. And then, from this motley crew, I heard several voices softly singing the Christmas carol, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. Not everybody knew the words to this carol, yet slowly the tune picked up and, and more voices joined in. Five minutes passed, and I looked up and stared in surprise at what I saw. Even though many were still singing the carol, I found them kneeling before the structure of the three crosses on the hillside. And on some of those rough, defeated faces, whom I so carefully selected, I saw tears of remembrance making their way down those coarse cheeks. End quote. This hard-bitten Hollywood director and producer reported that it was the greatest moment of his life and revealed to him again the lordship of Jesus Christ. Three crosses on a hillside, an unlikely crowd, a Christmas carol, and they were kneeling before Christ, Lord and King. When I have something to say, I'll come back. He did. The sermon became flesh and lived among us, and we've seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. When I have something to say, I'll come back. And he did. And we call it Christmas. Gracious God, may the words on my lips and the meditations in our hearts always be acceptable to you, for you are our rock and our redeemer, in whose name we pray. Amen. Let us stand to sing.
Let us remain standing as we dedicate our lives to God by reaffirming our faith using the Apostles' Creed. Christians, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The day he arose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. And let us pray. Generous God, you've been so bountiful with us, and we thank you for the chance to be generous as well. You've given us the beauty of this earth and taught us to be good stewards. You've given us family, friends, companions who've helped us along the way. Most of all, you've given us your Son. We praise you for all your blessings and ask that we may learn to respond by sharing our good fortune with others. Use these gifts that we are about to give to expand your love and your justice and your peace throughout the world. We pray in the strong name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lisa and Hannah. Thank you. As we come to our prayer time together, please note those names in the back of our bulletin, all those names listed that need our prayers, and so many more that are traveling this holiday season. We, ask, we hope that they'll travel safely, that God will be with them and all of us as we travel. Pray with me. O ruler of all and king of the nations, you sent your son to be the prince of peace. As you lift high, the humble lead people of power to recognize that there is no true peace without justice. But in turning to Jesus for the answer to their doubts, they may share his victory. Your son was in the world as one of us, and yet he knew the fellowship of an earthly home. But for three years he had nowhere to lay his head. Inspire our hearts by the good news of your love for us in Jesus Christ. To help feed the hungry and house the homeless, that all may rejoice in you as God and Savior. Eternal Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our homes, and our families. For the sake of him who rested in his mother's arms, be with our helpless little ones. 
For the sake of him who, as he grew, advanced in wisdom and favor with you, be with our children as they grow. For the sake of him who was apprenticed in his father's workshop, be with our young people who are setting out to face life's opportunities. May everyone share in the love of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. And may they know true joy and happiness this Christmas in giving and receiving for Jesus' sake. We now pause in silent adoration as we lift up to you our prayers, the joys that fill our hearts. the concerns that we will face this week, the petitions for others in our immediate family and in our church family. Be with this church family, O oh God, as it faces the future. Give us the vision that you have for this church at this time in history. Be present. Be gracious as you hear our souls cry out to you. We lift these private thoughts now, lifting them to you in the silence of our souls. O oh God, we thank you for Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we come to you in anticipation, in supplication, and in praise, uniting all of our private thoughts and petitions into the one great prayer your Son taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us stand to sing, I cannot tell.
We hope to see you back tonight at 6.30 for our candlelight communion service. If those of you that are starting to travel this day, we wish you a very Merry Christmas and we'll hopefully see all of you in the coming days. But our worship is over now at this time, but our service begins. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God give you grace to risk something big for something good. May God give you grace never to sell yourself short. May God give you grace to remember that the world is now too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. So may God take your minds and think through them. May God take your lips and speak through them. May God take your hearts and set them on fire. And may God lift up his countenance upon you and give to you and those you love and those whom nobody loves his peace. Dismiss us from this place, but never from your presence. We pray in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.